Manifesto at the Rand Stadium in Johannesburg, the party leader Musi Maimane will address the crowd at midday, we understand. The party says its manifesto for change is a culmination of uh, consulting South Africans and its party structures at all levels. Let's get more on the story now and uh, catch up with our senior anchor, Peter Ndoro, at the Rand Stadium where the build-up is currently underway. Hey Peter, thank you very much once again for joining us. The DA will indeed be laying out their plans for the country today and I guess trying to woo potential voters set the scene for us I want to see how I look with it <laughs> Blaine thanks very much indeed and uh, very well welcome to the Rand Stadium south of Johannesburg it's a 20,000 seater stadium and this is where the uh, Democratic Alliance will be launching its uh, party manifesto for today for the elections and they're calling it the Manifesto for Change. And we're going to get a little bit of the detail of uh, what's in there. What do they mean by change? And what could it mean for you as a, a voter and uh, thinking about which party to vote for? Well, today you'll get a chance to get uh, uh, an insight to the way that the DA is uh, thinking. And uh, the party leader, Musi Maimani, will be uh, presenting that uh, manifesto at about quarter past one. But uh, a lot of activity already taking place here. And uh, we'll be taking you through this uh, launch event uh, throughout uh, the next five or so hours and I'm not doing it alone I've got uh, two very skilled reporters uh, in the stadium that are going to be uh, talking to various people as they start to fill up the stadium let's uh, start with Abongile Dumago who's uh, where are you in fact Abongile <laughs> Peter Ndoro, thank you so much. I am from the pitch of this the Rand Stadium here on the Gauteng's East Rand. Of course, adrenaline pumping up, thousands of TA members coming in, flocking into this stadium to hear what Musi Maiman, the DA leader of the party, is going to say as he launches this elections manifesto. This has expected, 20,000 plus people are expected to sit on this stadium and actually get to hear what their leader has to say as they launch this elections manifesto here today and of course we are waiting in anticipation to get a sense of really what are these people who have come here the many that are still coming expecting to hear from uh, GM leader Musimai Mane with regards to the elections manifesto what they look forward to the most we understand that most young people sort of are in need of permanent jobs and of course the economy of the country continues to be on the on the downsides now the DA has to sort of come up with solutions as we were told yesterday during their preparations that you know what they need they are coming with a solutions driven manifesto we are going to hear what Musimai Mane has to say regarding that otherwise for now let me hand you over to my colleague Patricia Fisari on the other side of Range Stadium Patricia well, uh, good morning. Certainly, I'm joining my uh, colleagues Peter and uh, Abongi here uh, from the Rand uh, Stadium. And we'll be bringing you a lot of updates in terms of what uh, the uh, DA manifesto will be bringing you uh, for this day. And throughout, we'll try and cross all the corners of uh, this uh, particular stadium and bring you the messages, the expectations, the hopes, and uh, of course, uh, just uh, the interpretation of uh, the various Democrats that have come from all parts of the country to come and hear what uh, promises, what message the party leader, Musi Maimani, will be outlining in the party manifesto as we head closer to the 2019 national elections. I think uh, until then, until we bring you some of those updates and you can hear the mood building up gradually, the energy is of course also uh, picking up a lot of uh, DA members are filling up the station, uh, the stadium. So uh, let's go back uh, to Peter, where he's uh, with uh, some guests. Patricia and Abongile, thanks very much indeed. Uh, so those are our reporters on the ground that are going to be getting a sense of this atmosphere throughout the next five hours. And as you can hear from the music, there's a, a festive mood in the air. But to tell us a little bit more about today and also what their plans for, and uh, if they do win the elections, my next guest might actually be my, my boss, Kumsele Van Dam, Shadow Minister for the DA. Thanks very much for communications. 
Um, we're hearing the singing and dancing. Is that the mood within the party? Yes, um, it's a very exciting day for us as the Democratic Alliance. It's the day we finally get to detail our manifesto. I mean, we spent the last couple of months since last year going around telling South Africans that the DA's plan is to build one South Africa for all. We want to accelerate service delivery when we get into government. We want an honest and professional police service. We want to fight corruption and we want to create um, real access to real jobs. So our leader today will be laying that out in detail. So it's very exciting, to, as you can see, DA supporters are coming in and also just ordinary members of the public um, who have who just come here to hear for themselves what it is the DA uh, is offering to their country. All right, so, and, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people, young people in particular, and they're getting all these messages, all these promises, but they're saying, where's the proof that you can deliver all of yes. these things? I mean, I've spent uh, the last couple of months literally talking to a lot of people, including young people, and their problem is, is that they say political parties come with promises and they don't see change. I mean, the last 25 years of ANC governments is proof that lots of promises get made and then there's no change. But I think as a democratic alliance, what we have is proof of our promises actually working and delivering. I mean, if we are, because it's a general election, if we look at provinces, we'll look at the Western Cape. It has the lowest unemployment rates, went under 20% for the first time, best service delivery, clean audits, uh, best put, uh, delivery of free basic services for the poor. So that's an example of what the DA can do. Um, our premier candidate, Alan Windy, um, if we win the West Cape, when we win the Western Cape, because we'll make sure that we win it, we'll continue on that work to make sure that uh, the Western Cape becomes the beacon of hope for South Africa and an example of the change that the Democratic Alliance can bring. All right, so now most political parties have uh, maybe two or three really big ticket items that can fundamentally change a, a society. What would you say are the things that you can change straight away that South Africans will be able to say, do you know what, my life is better now? Yes, I mean, to be, use the example of our yeah. municipality, I think in order to deliver, first you need to deal with corruption. Because corruption is what blocks service delivery, it's what blocks job creation, it's what blocks a lot of things. So as we come in, we came into the city of Joburg, we discovered 7 billion corruption. So the beginning really is about clearing out the dirt, sweeping out the dirt. And then once that's done, then we can begin the work of delivery. Uh, in the city of Tuane, within the first year, we were able to get um, a, a clean audit. So it's literally about the first thing you do is you clean out the dirt and then you start delivery. So we, we, we've proven that where we govern that once you deal with those issues, then you can roll out um, service delivery and improve the lives of the residents living in those, in those areas. So Pretoria and Johannesburg, some people might say you haven't quite blown the lights out. Yes. Did you need more time? No, I think it's, um, to use an example of the city of Cape Town, the first term was cleaning up the mess that the ANC left um, and also improving service delivery. The second term was delivery. The third term was even more delivery. So it is a lot of work to clean up the mess. And I think people are just so hungry for change. They've been struggling for such a long time that they want immediate results. And we'll do our ultimate best to make sure that we get those immediate results. But first, we have to clean out the garbage, so to speak, in order to clear the decks for us to do the job of uh, delivering to the people of um, the areas we govern. All right, let's chat a little bit about uh, you as Shadow Minister for Communications. So, um, the SABC is uh, something that you've been watching. What would you do if you were the Minister of Communications? I am uh, absolutely passionate about my job as a Shadow Minister of Communications. I am absolutely passionate about the SABC. I think I spend my most time on the SABC. Um, as you know, we had the inquiry um, to make sure that the corruption was dealt with and Saudi was removed. Um, and also the big issue for me was a retrenchment issue. I didn't want staff to be retrenched without any sort of skill 
order it's been uh, taken place. And then now the next big thing is to make sure that there's a full board. So what I would do if I was the um, Minister of Communications, I mean, I believe South Africa needs a public broadcaster. It has a specific mandate, for example, to cover such events that private broadcasters don't have. I would make sure that the SABC is run well, that the SABC can self-sustain. Um, I think the reason why the SABC needs money is because of the corruption of uh, Saudi and his cohorts. The financial position the SABC finds itself in can't be blamed on Matota Matbagwe, uh, who I think is doing an excellent job in a very, very trying conditions. And the board, I really, I'm really grateful for the board members who've stayed behind after the other board members uh, decided to quit. So the road ahead for me really is about ensuring a full board and then getting about the work of getting the SABC back on its feet. I think it can be the broadcaster that South Africa is proud of, it can self-sustain and it's something that I'm extremely passionate about and um, I'll continue to work. Even during the election, the SABC is still there um, for me to take care of. Alright, so under the DA, what other responsibilities does the communications minister have? We've seen splits uh, coming back under yes. the ANC. What would well, I mean, I heard that uh, after the election, uh, President Ramaphosa intends on, intends on merging the Department of Com Communications with Telecommunications, which makes sense. I mean, it didn't, the split didn't make sense in the first place. But I'm not going to talk about what he's going to do because we are going to win government. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks very much indeed. And uh, we, we thank you for giving us this time to share your thoughts with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. All right, so that was the uh, Shadow Minister for Communications, Pumzile Van Dam, talking to us. And uh, very uh, uh, positive about the message that uh, Musi Maimani is going to be delivering a little bit later on. Uh, we'll have more guests for you throughout uh, the next uh, four and a half uh, to five hours before his message. Uh, so stay with us. Uh, in the meantime, though, let's come back to you, Blaine. Peter, thank you very much indeed, as well as Abugile and Patricia. Thank you very much.